It's my great honor and joy to be able to introduce our speaker for tonight. Christy Brown is one of Louisville and Kentucky's greatest gifts. I'm also proud to call her my friend. By way of background, Christy grew up in Western Maryland and above all loved riding her horse. She went on to college in the great city of Boston at Gartland College and met a handsome and wonderful young man named Owsley Brown II of Louisville, Kentucky, whom she married, took up residence in Louisville, and bore and raised their two daughters and one son here. While Owsley was very busy leading the Brown Foreman Corporation to become a global enterprise. In between times, Christie got involved in the restoration and renewal of the cathedral in Louisville. And she was a key fi figure in the uh, invention of the Louisville Festival of Faiths. 17 years later, the Festival of Faiths has, ga has gained national and international acclaim and hosts many thousands of guests each year. As Christie began to be aware of the environmental crisis, she saw it as a matter of faith and of spirituality that we are called to work to protect God's creation, to protect it against the devastation that human callousness is causing all over the earth. So Christy put her great mind and her great heart at the service of seeking solutions that work. I first met Christy and Owsley at a Festival of, Festival of Faith event in 2008 where we accidentally ended up in a discussion group together. And Christy expressed great interest in what we were trying to do with New Pioneers for a Sustainable Future. A few months later, when New Pioneers was in a severe financial crisis, and we didn't know if we could continue, the Browns' generous financial help enabled us to keep this work going and they've been great supporters ever since. Unfortunately, Owsley was taken from Christie unexpectedly a year and a half ago. The loss of her soulmate, her best friend, and her brilliant partner in so much civic work was deeply devastating. But even that terrible loss has not daunted the spirit of Christina Lee Brown. She's more involved than ever in sustainability, the arts, interfaith activities, civic community building, restoring old parts of Louisville, and a host of other projects way too long to mention. And so without further ado, please join me in offering a very warm Central Kentucky welcome to Christy Brown. Thank you, Sister Claire. I don't need to, um, to mention to any of you, although I would be remiss in not beginning by saying how extraordinarily fortunate each of you are, as I am, to have Sister Claire as our friend. Uh, she, as Again, as you know better than I, but she is an extraordinary thinker, with an incredible heart and an absolutely endless amount of energy. I have been told that I have a lot of energy, but there is no way that I can keep up with Sister Claire. She is just, but all of that combined together has produced for you and with you the most, I think, what is one of Kentucky's most remarkable organizations, the New Pioneers. You all should be, and I really want to stand here and try to get my shoulders back to try to hold the level, the amounts of pride that I have on my shoulders for you. And what each of you has and uh, is going, are going to accomplish with this remarkable organization is just nothing short of miraculous. 
You have, I, I said at dinner, and I'm sorry for repeating myself to those of you uh, who we were together, but you have one of Kentucky's greatest models. And I want you if, you, if you leave here, when you leave here, please to say to the next person who is not in the room, please say to them, we have the most extraordinary model. It is a model that needs to be emulated in your, and, and um, replicated in your adjoining counties. And I'm so proud that any number of you here are representing adjoining counties. It is a model that needs to be replicated throughout the state, and it's a model that I believe should be replicated throughout the region. And as I said at, um, at dinner, I am here in any way that I can to help you when you get that plan, God bless you, on how to uh, replicate your great work. I'm here to help you in any and every way that I can, as well, I believe, lots and lots of other people. And I know you all know this because you're all leaders in your own right, but one thing that I learned when I, uh, Sister Claire mentioned that I came from Maryland, like um, I know many of the people that settled this part of Kentucky did, and so I feel at home. I'm, I'm here in your homeland, which uh, has the roots of my homeland. And um, I, when I first started volunteering, I, the, one of the biggest uh, projects I was asked to do, and I guess I was maybe 22 and just been here a year or so, was to run after Theater of Louisville's then largest fundraiser, which was called Les Boutiques de Noël. And it was a fun thing that we did, and we worked all year, and I made lots of friends, which of course was the most important, important aspect to me of it. But when it was all said and done, it was, and it was over, I was just like, oh, gosh, here I still am, a new person in this state, in this city. I do know more people, thanks to Le Boutique de Noel, but was that really worth it? Was that all that effort really worth all that energy? And I think I cried because I was lonely. Um, but you know what I decided then, something that you I know you all know, which is it was only worth it if I thought it was worth it. And that I had to do the self-evaluation as to whether or not the time that I spent actually equated to something that perhaps made a substantive contribution to the theater and perhaps to the community. And it was when I figured out in my own brain and in my own heart that, in fact, that really was worth it. And I was really proud of myself. That I was then able to go on and accept an even larger uh, request for a larger volunteer responsibility. Because it's when we know in our hearts that the work that we're doing is invaluable and the work that we're doing is essential, that then the great things begin to happen. Clearly you know that because you continue to grow the new pioneers in ways that, as I mentioned, are absolutely extraordinary. What I think you're doing, and I, and I, I don't claim to know all of your history by any stretch, but what appears to me as what you're doing is that you are showing the rest of Kentucky and all of us that learn about you, that you understand about the interconnectedness of life. And that you understand that if you're going to have a vibrant Springfield and a vibrant rural area around your heart, the heart of your, your community, your city, that you need to know your history I get the great sense that you know your history and that you're really, really proud of it. You wouldn't have restored this magnificent building, among other things that you've done, if, if in fact that wasn't an important part of who you are. You also understand that, the, uh, that there's an interconnection between nature and human health. Starting the first recycling project, in, I believe in the state, or one of the first in the state, that's extraordinary. I live in one of the fanciest sections of Louisville, quote, so it's, so it's thought of, Glenview, Kentucky. We don't have recycling in Glenview, Kentucky. I have to go and commission my own recycling, which I am proud to say I do do, but in order to be able to recycle. 
because, and with convenience, of course. But you started that. You know, Glenview, Kentucky needs to learn from you. I said to Sister Claire a number of years ago um, th that I was going to take your brochure of your work then, which has greatly expanded since then, and I was going to take it to our city hall, to our mayor, and I was going to show them what you all were doing here. Now, I have done that, but I didn't stick with it. I didn't actually take that brochure, and what, which is what I am going to do when you get your new brochure. I'm going to take it again to our now new, new, newest mayor, and I'm going to show him, and I'm going to say, maybe create a little checklist and say, look, let's look at what they're doing in Springfield, and let's compare it to what we're doing in Louisville. And then maybe even we should flip it. Because I think if we could figure out ways to work together city by city, county by county, we, to learn from each other, maybe we would all end up doing just that much more. But I also think more importantly, what we would end up doing is we'd end up having more fun. Because I don't think there's anything more fun than meeting new people. I mean, I am hopeless with names. So thank the Lord you have your name tags on. And then same for me, so you can remember who I am. But I think that meeting and learning from each other is one of the keys to um, a, the happy, a happy, inspiring life. And I would like to say that I think that's one of the things that's lacking in Kentucky. I am embarrassed to say to you that I've never been in Springfield. That's pretty bad. I've been here for 44 years in Kentucky, and I've never been in your beautiful town of Springfield until tonight. I love it. There's a happy feeling about it. You have beautiful sidewalks. You have beautiful historic buildings. I now just learned you have one of the oldest continuous in use courthouses in the, in the state, probably means in the region. I mean, how thrilling is that? And I love history, and I've never been to see your courthouse until just now. But I think that when, when I came, just a to little sort of comment of 44 years ago, when I came to Louisville, to put it in perspective, and I think this is part of the problem, perhaps, 71, for example, wasn't finished. Now, when I say that to my children, who are now 44 and, you know, 37 and whatever, they can't conceive of that. They're like, what, Mom? No way. Well, I couldn't understand, because I came from Washington and Maryland, I couldn't understand why my husband didn't invite me to go to Lexington for dinner or to go to Cincinnati for dinner. It was like you were going on a safari when you went to Cincinnati to <laughs> spend the night. I mean, it was a very big deal. But I think it had to do in, in some part with the fact that all those years ago, we didn't have the, the, the fancy highway systems that we now have. But I think there's still some kind of a mindset. I mean, I love coming and seeing your magnificent land. Someone, was it Karen? I, on, one of your, on one of your YouTubes that I watched for your forums that you have, which are brilliant, I can't remember whether you said this, but somebody there said that they'd been on a trip and they'd been 2,000 miles. Was that? Laurie. Laurie, excuse me, I see I have terrible names. Laurie, tell what you said, because I thought that was just fabulous. Do you remember? I do remember. What I commented was that I've been uh, on a road trip for 10 days, traveled nearly 2,000 miles. The prettiest trip we had was from Danville into Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I came with Regina, who, Blake, who's here, the other gal from Louisville, there she is, and I, uh, I, I quoted you on the way, on the drive from Louisville to here because you are spot on. And you could go any place in the world. And I actually, I think if you're part of the country, it reminds me of a Cotswolds in England. And you know, somebody else is gonna think of other places that it reminds you of. But it's those beautiful, happy places that clearly have been cared for. You could tell that stream that we followed, the big beautiful stream, I don't know its name, I'm embarrassed to say, but it looked clear, it looked clean. You know, it, the land is cared for and loved in the same way that your community is cared for and loved. And that is a gift that is just extraordinary. I, I love to, to bring things because, um, I don't know, I, I brought you a little gift I'll pass around 
but it's one of my favorite, my favorite parts of who my family, we are. <laughs> and this is from our farm. And as you know, it's probably, what, about 250 million years old. And it's from our creek, which is called Darby Creek. And I don't know if Darby Creek, if we ha what our connections are of the watersheds, but I bet we've got them. And um, I think I brought this because I think it represents what you are doing. The work that you're doing with the uh, new pioneers is work for 200 million years from now. And I'm going to just pass that around. I know Sister Claire has one of these in your office, so it was but it's holes not, to Newcastle. But it's but not from Darby Creek. It's not from Darby Creek. <laughs> <laughs> but as, uh, from a global perspective, and I don't claim you are, are, I'm sure many of you, much more knowledgeable than I am about what's happening to our world. But I don't think there's any question in my mind that we are daily destroying our air, our water, and our soil. And what I would like to suggest, and I'm sure you believe this yourselves, but in doing that, I think we're honestly putting the gun right to our heads. And I, like many of you, have grandchildren. I have nine grandchildren. Alcy and I have nine grandchildren. I feel so blessed. But it makes me, especially with his recent unexpected demise, I, it makes me want to be that much more vocal and work that much harder to do whatever I humanly can to preserve and to make us all understand that by preserving the air, the water, and the soil, we are then preserving each other and not all of the natural life as well as human life. And I don't think that, at least in the circles in which I live, this is not part of our normal conversation. I don't go to a dinner party or to a cocktail party, of which I love doing both, and I don't hear people saying, you know, maybe it would be better if we evaluated the success of our country and of our city rather than by, how do we now evaluate it? Gross national product? How about if we didn't do it that way? How about if we evaluated the health of Springfield by the health of its air, the health of its water, and the health of its soil? I would like to, uh, I would like to, I would like to challenge you, the new pioneers, to think with us, with me, but, but you do it, because you know how to do these things. To think of how to create that kind of conversation. To create, to figure out how to create those kind of metrics. I don't think it's that hard. But I think it's hard because we haven't done it. And I would like to challenge the new pioneers to create these new kinds of conversations. Because when we do that, it's going to be absolutely transformative. I, um, and I think Kentucky, I think that Kentucky, and particularly this central Kentucky, with your leadership, can and should become recognized as, you, as the U.S. sustainable agricultural headquarters for the United States of America. Wow. And I think you already have it. And I think if you begin to just evaluate it as such, talk about it as such, then it is such. It is such anyway, but I think that it's, it's a matter of how you phrase it and how you talk about it. So uh, as we, I just returned from a National Geographic trip that was extraordinary. We were with some of the greatest thinkers uh, in the world on the subject of the oceans. And I have nothing positive to say to you. I actually could pull out my Kleenex and I could stand here and simply cry with you at the destruction of which I had no idea the depth of the destruction uh, of, of what we're doing to our oceans. It, we, this trip went, that I was on was very extensive. We went to many countries and it wasn't until I got miles and miles and miles and miles away from here and miles away from anything that I recognized that I saw what I called really clean air again. We've forgotten what clean air is. So I, 
Um, there was a, a particular on the, on the seas, and many of you probably know this, and this is a, a slight diversion from the sort of uh, nucleus and reality of central Kentucky, but I think it's very important. And that is, and you probably know this, but I didn't, that there is um, the Law of the Sea Convention, or the Law of the Sea Treaty, that's an international treaty that um, is, I guess, 160, I have to read, 162 countries have signed and joined this convention. But guess what? We haven't. No. And guess who are two of the largest, most vocal opponents to signing it? No? I'm talking about the Senate. I'm sorry, in the Senate. Yeah, and his counterpart. Yeah. Now, I, I don't mean to offend anybody's political affiliation because I, I have, I mean, I'm, I've, I've been both in. <laughs> and I still feel like I am all the above. But the reality is, that is appalling. And the reality is that to lead into something else that I have uh, personally become very uh, engaged with, which is trying to learn how to have a better way of conversing with political candidates, regardless of what party, so that we actually, when we pull the lever, or don't pull the lever, we actually are pushing that little pencil mark, which is so tiny for, I mean, really, something as important as that. Doesn't that frustrate you? I mean, you know, you, you get all geared up and you've worked hard, you've thought a lot about a particular candidate, and all of a sudden all you've got is that little tiny place <laughs> with that pencil to tell all that you really feel about this candidate. But I think that what our country and our state needs, and state in particular, is a different way of conversing with our candidates. So that all that the new pioneers represents, which is what is your heart and soul, that you know when you do that little dot or you pull that lever, you know those people represent your values. You know that they, you care about the air, the water, and the soil, or they care about social justice, or they care about whatever subjects are dearest to your heart. So I also would like to challenge you to try to come up with a new kind of way for all of us to learn from you on how to converse with candidates so that we can actually understand completely and fully what we're all about. What I started to say, and I, I, got, I lost the train of thought for a second about the, talking about the highway not being completed. What I meant, what I wanted to say about that was, I still believe that there is this mindset that Louisville is in Louisville, Frankfurt is in Frankfurt, Lexington's in Lexington, and God forbid, I don't know where Eastern and Western Kentucky are. I mean, I, I don't know. I think they're both magnificent, and I want them all part of our family, but I get the feeling that we kind of forget where they are and who they are, and maybe we don't even know. So, you know, if you're able to take your wonderful model and to replicate it in your neighboring counties and then branch it out, you would be doing more for unifying the state in this important way than I, can, than I, I could imagine. I want to also commend you for something else that I hope you know you're doing, uh, and if you don't, I'd love to just share for a second. Thanks to Sister Claire um, and Alzey and I meeting at Mary Evelyn Tucker's lecture is what it was. She's from Yale and one of the great thinkers of our, of our country, world, really. At any rate, thanks to meeting there and learning about your, your wonderful work, you now, as many of you I hope know, are now the um, umbrella organization. Is that the right way to say it, Sister Claire? Holding organization? For, will you say what it is? Sustainable Religious Lands Project. And the Sustainable Religious Lands Project came out of a previous festival of faith, the whole conversation about it, because it was at one of those festivals that we learned that something like seven or eight percent of the world's remaining arable lands are owned by religious entities around the globe. And since that is the case, there's a huge opportunity 
to help those owners of those lands figure out, or help them help themselves figure out, how they can become recognized sustainable uh, stewards of those land holdings. And so thanks to, and Sister Claire can tell you more about it in detail later, but thanks to the, her, Sister Claire's leadership, um, quite a number of other sisters' leadership, but also to your wonderful organization, this concept is starting. It's launching right here in Springfield. And I would, I would love to be invited back here in 10 years so that we could all celebrate where I think that seed of an idea, how it's going to germinate and how it's going to affect broadened and matured stewardship of the land. I, um, I think it's time for me to stop, but I have two, two little goodies. And one is, um, I, because I know that you are all optimists, because you wouldn't be doing the work that you are doing with the uh, New Pioneers if you weren't, I wanted to raise this up. This is a magazine, it's called The Intelligent Optimist. It's um, done, you know it? Oh good. It's, it's done by a friend of mine, Urian Camp, is the editor and the founder of it. And I highly recommend that if you don't know it, please look it up and uh, see if it's something that would be interesting for your family. And then I have a gift for you. Um, I know you've seen it, but I, I um, years ago, because like you, I care about history. I care about the preservation of historic institutions. I purchased Global Stoneware Company. And I did that because I wanted to see if we could figure out a plan that would enable the company to survive in this very competitive uh, era. And in fact, I'm proud to say it has survived. And it's now owned by a wonderful gentleman named Steve Smith, who's actually from out in this neck of the woods originally, his family are. And this is a, this is a little cross that I made um, when I was the steward of Louisville Stoneware. And as you could see from the back, it's the towel, but it's what St. Francis, it's how actually he sort of was his logo, I guess, kind of. And I think it's particularly exciting. I don't know a thing about this new pope, but we all have hope, right? And um, I was particularly pleased that he picked the name Francis, because I'm very fond of St. Francis. And I thought, uh, if you don't mind, if you think it's OK, Sister Claire, that we might just all let me end my little talk by saying our prayer of St. Francis together, if that would be OK. And I think it's, an, I think it's meaningful, and regardless of your faith, um, I think it's meaningful because your work shows to me that each of you, in all that you're doing, and I know it's hard, hard work, and I thank you, are in fact being true instruments of peace. So now, should we just say together? Okay. Lord, make me an instrument of that peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. And where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, harmony. Where there is doubt, faith. And where there is despair, hope. And where there is darkness, light. Where there is sorrow, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, and to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning, and it is in dying. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to um, just take a few minutes to give you an update on what's going on with New Pioneers, some of which you know and some of it which you probably don't know yet. As I've said to our members many, many times, the goals of New Pioneers are to educate, to demonstrate, and to advocate for sustainability. 
We define our mission as promoting sustainable thinking and sustainable development to ensure a healthy, safe, and prosperous future for all. And that does not all, that all does not just mean all the humans, or all. And I'd like to commend Joe Pat Hayden because he was very instrumental in shaping that mission statement. And that was quite a while ago, wasn't it, Joe Pat? <laughs> Joe Pat was our first president, and Arthur Young was our second president of the board, and both of them are with us tonight, so we're grateful. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Within the, the, those frameworks, for the past three years, we've had three specific goals for new pioneers. To build a local food system here in the county, to educate for sustainability in all the ways that we can think of, including electronically, and to grow our organization. In regard to building the local food system, our primary focus since last spring has been to accept the invitation of the city of Springfield to manage the Springfield Farmers Market. That's been a lot of work for us, but we're proud to say that last year we had 18 seasonal vendors and we tripled the market sales over the previous year. We were able to add uh, senior Farmers Market coupons last year and we expect to add WIC coupons as well for Farmers Market this year. We have several new vendors planning to join us for the 2013 season and we're hoping to triple our sales again. But we can only do that, of course, if you and your neighbors and friends go out of your way to come and buy some of your food from us. We have meat, we have eggs, we have vegetables, we have fruits, we have cheese, we have wine, and we're gonna have more things with the addition of these new vendors. We're seeking 5% of the food budget of every resident in the county. 5%, that's not much, right? But if everyone in the county bought 5% of their food at the Springfield Farmer's Market, we would add $2.2 million to the vendor's income in this county. $2.2 million is a lot of money, right? Just 5% of your food budget. If you wanted to, I think during the summer I probably spend 40 to 50% of my food budget at farmer's market. But just 5% would make a huge difference. Secondly, we're trying to educate for sustainability in all the ways that we can. We sell recycled rain barrels to conserve water and knitted dishcloths to help people to kick the paper towel habit. We have a new website, a Facebook page, pretty soon we're gonna have Twitter, and we have a very long email list through which we try to keep you in the community electronically aware of our agenda. We work with students at St. Catherine College on their community service projects and their internships, and we offer the Awakening the Dreamer Symposium whenever we are invited. Over a thousand families are now participating in our Green Pioneer Homes effort. We're getting ready for our seventh Moving Forward Forum. That will be in early June. Those are quarterly forums that we hold at the Community and Technical College in which we invite three local folks each time from different sectors of the community to reflect together with us with a live audience and also on cable TV on what is being done and what can be done within their arena. We had the artists the first time, we had educators the second time, we had healthcare professionals. Last time we had local government leaders. Um, to reflect together on what is already being done for sustainability and what more can be done within that arena that they belong to. To help us to become even more fully Kentucky's greenest, most sustainable rural community. Those of you who are new are not aware that in, nine, in 2007, I think, no, 2009, our city council and our fiscal court jointly proclaimed that Springfield, Washington County is Kentucky's greenest, most sustainable rural community.
We knew we couldn't prove that, but we had a list of 25 things that are happening in this county, and we said, let's claim the, the title. If another county can do better, fine, we'll give them the title, but at least we'll get talking about sustainability across county lines. And thirdly, we're growing our organization in all the ways that we can. We're really pleased to be collaborating with the new Barry Center program at St. Catherine College, and the director of that program, Leo, would you stand up? <laughs> Leah, Leah's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. And Leah is working very hard on the local part of the International Berry Conference that's going to happen April 4th to 6th. And I hope that you saw the email that said, and this is a great blessing, thanks to Leah, that local people, people from this community, can go and watch the proceedings of that conference all day Friday and all day Saturday on a downlink in the new Emily Hundley Library at St. Catherine College for free. It costs $185 to go to the conference, but you can, you can watch the entire proceedings by just showing up at the Hundley Library on Friday or Saturday. So that's a fantastic opportunity. We already have about 20 new memberships this year, and we're very pleased about that, and some of you are here. We're delighted to have you join us. We need your help to gain a whole lot more members. We stay just at about 200 because a few die or a few move away, and then we get a few new ones, but we really want to get to that 400 mark. So any help you can give us, there are membership envelopes up here, and I think there are more in the registration tables. Take a couple and give them to friends that you think might have an interest and see if we can't grow the membership. We're thinking seriously about how we can encourage Marion County and Nelson County folk to join forces with us to expand this rural sustainability effort. And we're thrilled, as Christy said, we're thrilled that so many from Nelson County and Marion County are here tonight. We really want to talk with you and we want to see what more can be done in those, among those neighboring counties. And very significantly, as Christy mentioned, since January we have taken on a new project about enabling faith communities to, who own land in our region. And the region is defined as three hours driving time around Louisville. So it's southern Ohio, southern Indiana, uh, parts of Tennessee, parts of West Virginia. It's a, it's a pretty big area. Um, and what we're trying to do is to enable faith communities who own land in this region to explore how they could use their lands more sustainably. Now that's a big undertaking, and we're only gonna bite off one bite at a time. But I wanna ask our board members to please stand and be recognized, because it was a big commitment on the board's part. Would, our, would you all who are on the board please stand up? It was a big commitment to say after, Christy gives me credit for this idea. This is Christy Brown's idea. She's been trying for a year and a half to get me to say, yeah, we could take that under New Pioneer's umbrella. At first it was like, no way, we can't handle that. But God does funny things and one day I was driving home from a conversation with her and I thought, maybe she's right, maybe we need to do it. So I wrote it up and brought it to the executive committee didn't know what they were going to say, and they talked a bit, they asked a few questions, and they said, that's pretty consistent with our mission. And then we took it to the whole board, and they talked about it and asked some questions, and they said, that's pretty consistent with our mission. And a vote was taken, and we've leaped into the unknown in a way that we're probably not ready for, but I don't think I've ever been ready for anything important I've done in my life, and I don't think the rest of us have either. So anyway, we are launching, last, uh, two weeks ago we had a meeting in Louisville of leaders of 11 congregations of Catholic sisters who happen to be kind of on the cutting edge in Kentucky of moving sustainability agendas forward. So we met with them and now we're working on next steps to um, look at how can their farms be used more sustainably, how can water be conserved better on their land, how can 
soil be treated more carefully? How can the tree canopy be expanded? And et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's, a, it's a big undertaking and New Pioneers is honored to have our name associated with it. And we'll just kind of go with it and see where it takes us. So there's a lot going on and all of it's good and none of it could be possible without all of you and all of the rest of those who couldn't be here tonight but our board members and members and donors and supporters in the community of our efforts. You encourage us every day, you help us every day in our dream of really making this area Kentucky's greenest, most sustainable rural community. And we're gonna stand up tall when we say that and we're gonna tell everybody we meet, right? <laughs> we belong to that kind of a community. So thank you very much.